This video has been made with reference to the previous video which I posted on YouTube which documents the development of a Max MSP patch which attempts to emulate the sound of a wave crashing on a beach using four bands of noise. The reason why I've made this video is in response to a query that I received recently asking how the patch is put together. I thought I'd start with the reason why I made this patch in the first place. Uh, firstly, I grew up by the sea and I recently visited my hometown where I made lots of recordings of the sea. I've got memory, many childhood memories of hearing the sea in various situations, so it's very firmly rooted in my memory there. And it's, I guess, one of my favorite sounds as well. It's a very comforting sound. When I was there recently, I set up my recording equipment on the beach, often very early in the morning and captured the sound. I wanted to record the sound of waves crashing to get a better understanding of how they sound and how they're composed. When I had these recordings, I did study their spectral frequency over time using a graphical approach, uh, using a freeware software like Audacity, which allows you to create that graphical representation of the frequency spectrum where you can identify the high, medium, and, and low frequencies uh, using the different colors and such. Uh, perhaps more importantly though, the most, uh, the most effective approach that I found was to use my ears and to listen to the recordings uh, to get a better understanding of the way the sound was composed. Um, I also made this patch to help me better understand Max MSP. Uh, I've used this program over the last 10 years on and off, but I hadn't really used it that much over the last three to four years. So to get my knowledge back up to scratch, I decided to do it with a project like this. So now let's move on to the patch, but let's let's first consider how how the sound of a wave crashing is composed. This this patch is very simple at this stage, and it's it's really a, a pretty crude representation of what is a very complex sound event. Uh, the sound of crashing wave consists of many many bands of um, many bands of frequencies, which can be approximated to uh, a series of noise bands. And in this case, I've just got four noise bands. So if we're standing on the beach, it, how we how we hear the sound of a wave crashing really depends on where where we're situated on the beach. Um, this patch is being put together. Um, to emulate the sound of hearing a crashing wave very close up to where the wave crashes. Um, so if we're in this situation, firstly we hear a very low, low frequency noise band, which is a distant sound of the wave approaching. And as, as the wave gets closer to us, we move through the frequency spectrum. The, the low frequency bands still, still continue, but as the wave approaches and eventually crashes, we hear more high frequencies. And you only need to sort of um, imagine that to get an understanding of that. So let's move on to the patch and, and break it down. It begins with a noise object, which creates a noise signal, a broadband noise signal. This is connected to a biquad object. It's connected to the first inlet here, which receives uh, the signal input connected to the second inlet of the biquad filter, which is the signal float value, is a graph filter object, which is a graphical object here. Um, I'm sending a low pass filter command to the object, which creates a low pass filter. You can see me there moving through the frequency spectrum. So this restricts the noise signal to low frequency. The biquad object is then connected to a mathematical function object, uh, in this case a multiplier. This goes into the left inlet. Into the right inlet is our line function. Now a line function will scale the level of gain over a given duration. In this case it's 20 seconds. I found the best way to do this uh, with this patch was to use the graphical function object, which allows me to plot um, plot the scale of gain over the duration 
of 20 seconds. So you can see with this first noise band, this low frequency noise band, I'm scaling the gain very early on to hit the peak here. As we move through and examine the th second, third and fourth noise bands, you'll see that the peaks occur uh, later on in the duration. So here's the third one, here's the fourth one, second and the first. So we've got, uh, we've got a low pass filter for the first one. This is the lowest of the frequencies. This is another low pass filter here. Um, this moves a little bit further up through the frequency spectrum, but it still retains uh, the low frequencies. The third noise band um, uses a band pass filter, which is a bit more specific to a certain band of noise. So it's more of a, a, mid, a mid middle frequency range. And then finally, the fourth noise band uses another band pass filter. The gain is set a little bit lower, but this attempts to emulate that sort of hissing, hissing sort of bubbling sound that I was explaining before. And this occurs very late on in the 20 second duration. Each of these noise bands then go to the DAC, which is how we hear the sound. So as I did in the previous video, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how this sounds and, and talk my way through it. So here we're beginning with the low, low noise bands. Moving on to the middle frequency noise band. And then finally our high frequency noise band here. So hopefully that explains the patch a bit better. Um, if any of you have any further questions, then I'll be happy to answer them in, in due time. And if you have any suggestions as to where I might take this patch in the future, that would be appreciated. But in the meantime, I'll see you later.